A concept created to inspire audiences and delight children can sometimes take on an unnerving and nightmarish form. They lurk on street corners or wait for you in the woods, luring children and frightening adults. Are they simply teenage pranksters, or is there something more sinister at play? This week's episode is Killer Clowns. Up uh, in the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinisterhood. I'm gonna kill you. Well, we're taking a bit of a different approach this week. We're, well, I will say Christy took one for the team because this is not your favorite subject. Uh, I do not like clowns. <laughs> never have, never will. I only have one clown that I don't like. Which one? Tim Curry's Pennywise. Oh, that's one of the most iconic clowns that people don't like. But we felt like after a double header of Gypsy Rose and a triple header of Bundy the shit bag, we needed something a little more lighthearted and... Uh, a little, a little frivolous. We're if not you doing, will. and also we love you. Thank you for listening. We're not doing this for you. It's for our own mental health. <laughs> I true. can't. I There's only so much murder we can read about. So much decapitation. Having a goddamn panic attack. <laughs> you know, I was like, I got it. What's big? I was like the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. I don't know. Something stupid. Santa. <laughs> Something. <laughs> I just, I just texted a person the Santa sketch from Stella, who's part of the state. This is a really deep cut comedy reference. Don't look that up. At the end of the sketch, Mrs. Claus engages in uh, sexual acts with three gentlemen, and I forgot that that's Elves? how it... No, just guys. It's <laughs> Michael Ian Black and David Wayne and Michael Showalter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just forgot that that's how it ended. And I was like, this sketch is funny. And then, like, ten minutes went by, and I went and just watched it really quick, and I was like, oh, shit. And I had to go, I'm sorry, it ends very obscenely. <laughs> Uh, Man, but most people wouldn't be surprised. So funny, though. God, it's so funny. I saw Michael Liam Black stand up a few years <laughs> ago, and it was phenomenal. He's great. His book is really, really good. Oh yeah, it's, um, it's like a book of mem- memoirs and like short essays, but they're fake. He has one about oh, how Billy fun. Joel doesn't like to play piano man but then he goes to a party and no one asks him to play it and he's really mad <laughs> stupid just stuff like that i love it it's very funny yeah he's great uh what hot american summer is one of my all-time so good. faves ken marino is on oh, he's also ken from the marino. i love him so much he's also on uh, and he's in veronica mars which mm-hmm. i love and he's on the comedy central roast of or not comedy central netflix historical roast of cleopatra oh yeah. really i he haven't plays, watched that yet he plays mark anthony is it funny he was funny on it the whole thing it's hit or miss thing. yeah it's, it depends on who the roasters are it's like hit or miss yeah that's uh, interesting if it's people that you like or whatever i haven't watched anything if it's not love island girl lately. you are on one about love island <laughs> okay if you have ever seen this show please message us because i need someone to talk to please about message, how crazy message Christy. this is i don't watch that show <laughs> message christy i'm watching season one uh, well, I think like 10 years ago, this actually was a show, but then it went away and now they're rebooting it. But this it, this is from 2015, season one. How do you filter the prudes out? Oh, my God, you don't. <laughs> the Check your lease. You're living in Fuck City. <laughs> That's all I can think of is Joe from Rest oh, of the such a good one. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, and perhaps our British listeners can tell us. Oh, is this a British show? It is British. Okay. So it's it's the British version of Paradise Hotel. Okay. Which is the American version of Love Island, if you want to <laughs> look at it that way. And they're both the sex versions of Survivor. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, yes, Great. yes. But the British one is so raunchy. Ooh. They, it will they're say... cheeky. It will... It, very cheeky. Oh, man. I had to look up an Lots article. Of and bums. They don't say that, but my God, do they say pied off. What does that mean? Like, he pied me off. You're going to pie me off. You mugged me off. What is pie me off? Is it fingering? No, pie you off from what I can gather. It sounds like it could be. <laughs> it means you you played somebody basically. Oh, okay. It's the equivalent of getting like a pie in the face. Oh. But Jesus Christ, do they love to say that term? I had to look up an article on all of the slang that they use because it is so and I have to use subtitles. Because <laughs> the <laughs> accents are so, so thick and the it's very interesting though, the language. I mean mm-hmm. it's like 
they're speaking English, but it's an entirely different language. I love it. It's very fascinating. I like a good colloquialism. To me. Yes, like it's crazy. Pied off, or is he pied me off? Pied off, mugged off. What is mugged off the same? Same thing, I think, just a different way of, mm-hmm. of saying it. Um, there's there's a ton. I'll, I'll I'll think of them throughout, but but also it is so raunchy. They straight up show people having sex. Hell yeah! Like under the covers, but still, it'll say at you the know beginning, what they're doing. It says at the beginning. Tonight's episode shows particularly raunchy scenes. Significant banging. They showed full on frontal nudity. I've seen a guy's dick twice. Wait, wait, wait. They can show that? I guess so. What They're not blurring on? it out. Hulu. Oh shit. I mean, it originally aired on a British channel. BBC. But we know what that stands for. IT2 Big or something. British. Big British cock. <laughs> It might as well be. This is what you just you see. You guys are listening. You did this to us. You made our brains mush because we read about Ted Kennedy. I, Ted Kennedy. Shit. Ted, Ted Bundy, Bundy. For a month. I said, I've got to have something to Bubble lighten gum. the load. And what I have found is, well, there's a lot of loads. They are all over that villa <laughs> in this, wherever the hell they're filming. <laughs> It is so wild. It's so crazy. It's I think it's also been taking forever. Like the goal is they win fifty thousand pounds. I don't know what that is in U.S. Well, dollars. One hundred grand or something. Uh, oh really? I mean it's it's a, it's like the, like a dollar fifty ish conversion. Rate, okay, I think. so they have to be in a couple. Last I checked a few years ago. <laughs> they have to be in a couple at the end of it to win this money. And it's been dragged out for a long time. Why wouldn't you just fake like you loved someone for money? People do it all the time. Melania Trump. There are so many people in this villa that are getting pied off and mugged off. (gasps) So you you think that someone that's why my one because in fourth grade I was told that a boy Mm -hmm. liked me. Mm -hmm. And then my friend said we should three way call him because he wrote me a note that said he liked me. And then we three way called him and he didn't know what I was talking about. And it turns out those girls wrote the note. I got pied off. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Miss Craylix. You, you got mugged no, off, I it was think, fifth in that grade. sense. I got he didn't off. he couldn't pie you off because he wasn't the one doing it. I got mugged off by the girls. But they'll all get in they'll be like super into each other, a guy and a girl, and then they'll bring in new guys or girls. <laughs> and then they get pied off for this new guy or girl. And they're and the best part is they all sleep in the same room. Ew. It's one giant like room. Like a hostel. <laughs> it is, exactly. Hostels are gross for They all reason. have to share. I would never stay in a hostel. People fart in the night. Oh, God. An old woman peeled an egg I that know. she had taken all the way from Toronto to Chicago. <laughs> so gross. In the hostel with me in her underwear. No, uh, thank you. I'd rather sleep in my car. Yeah, I should have slept on the L train. <laughs> I would have slept. I knew a girl that fell asleep on the L in train, In a booth at a Friday's. Don't fall asleep on the red line. This girl fell asleep on the red line. She woke up to a guy. <gasps> Jerking off on her? Yep, right in her face. Fuck no. Oh my yep. God. Don't fall asleep on the train. This is a that's vulgar how you episode. get pied off. <laughs> Somebody that's pied that's how off. you get pied off on the L train. There's no true crime. This is all not no paranormal. <laughs> this is just filthy. We're yeah, just... this is just the filth episode. Filth episode. But you know what? It fits in. I think it fits in with our subject because some of the. Uh, I read a book for this episode called Bad Clowns. Mm, ap- aptly named. There's And let me just say, there's enough to fill a book. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you suggested this topic, I thought, well, there's a couple of incidences. I had no idea it runs so deep. We have three listener requests up to do an episode on clowns in the forest there you go so i was looking at our listener suggestions and said you know what this is what we're doing this week <laughs> we need a little break i started having ted bundy nightmares and i started having patreon mini so topic nightmares oh to the yeah. point that i was like i have to just not i have to watch the office before we gotta I go take to a break gotta take a break yeah so we're doing clowns so you know what enjoy <laughs> yeah enjoy yeah i am I'm not a fan. I've been scared of them since I was little. It's well known in my family. That you don't like clowns? No, yes. When Tommy and I first started dating, Mm -hmm. he told me one night as we're driving down a street over in the Lakewood area of Dallas, Mm -hmm. and we see this beautiful, nice colonial house, and in the front yard is one of those street lamps that has kind of four bulbs on it. And the bulbs, the large globes, were green, red, yellow, and blue. Okay. Like big balloons. And I said, oh, that is creepy. And he says, you know who lives there, don't you? Oh, God. And I said, no. The Lakewood Clown. Ah! (laughs) And I said, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. 
He's he recently got out of the mental institution, and that's where he lives now. Oh God! And this became an ongoing bit that there was a Lakewood clown. That there was a Lakewood clown. We would drive down that street regularly, and he would pretend like the the car was dying. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and like pump the brakes and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. The cars, the Ded- cars stalling out, to a like right in front of this house, and it would legitimately scare me. And then now that globe street lamp has been removed. Well, because he he killed his final victims. I don't know, <laughs> and Come that's on. what happens when it's out. Yeah, and that was as far as the bit went. Well, one night I was at home by myself. This was before we lived together, and I opened up my laptop. And my screensaver just says, XOXO, the Lakewood clown. <laughs> he had changed my screensaver and then just left me by myself for the night. <laughs> I was so legitimately scared by it. I think I figured out why Tommy's such a good husband. It's because he was a, he tormented you as yeah. you dated. Yeah. He gaslighted me into being <laughs> To think that the clown was going to get you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I loved uh, Bozo the Clown as a kid. I watched no. it on WGN, was nationally uh, yeah. broadcast, and I lo- we loved Bozo as kids. Really? We loved him. Oh, yeah. I had a doll, Bozo the Clown. Love One of those things that blow up and you punch it. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the movie It with Tim Curry and it made me so scared. And to this day, I, I legitimately get scared thinking of it. I'm sweating and nervous right now thinking about Tim Curry. As Clowns are very wise. unnerving, and we are going to find out why. Just why that. There's a is. psychological reason why. There is. For those of us who are unnerved by one or all clowns, we're not crazy people. No, in there's fact, nothing it's very wrong. common. It's, it is a, uh, there's an evolutionary reason. Mm-hmm. And we'll tell you why. Well, I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get into this episode of Clowns. <laughs> in August of 2016, Terror gripped Greenfield County, South Carolina, as residents began to report seeing what they perceived to be evil clowns lurking near the woods and at various spots around town. It all started at the Fleetwood Manor apartment complex, where both children and adults claimed they were being harassed by clowns. Well, that is one way to... uh... (laughs) Bring put put your country, bring the community together, say, or say put your city on the map. Yep, yep, that's true. Why? How we maybe not have ever heard of Greenfield County, South Carolina. I Here had they not are. until this. Children reported hearing the clowns whispering in the woods, Ugh. chains rattling, and loud banging on their front doors. One young boy told his mother that the clowns used money to try and lure him to the house where they all supposedly lived, which was located near a pond deep in the woods. The frightened mother reported this incident to the police. I would have loved to have received that call. Your emergency. My son has been lured <laughs> into the forest by a, there's a house full of clowns. There's a house full of clowns down there by the pond. The one where we all go catfish noodling. You know they, li- they it's right next door. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Did you say a house full of clowns? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's full of clowns. Well, I always thought clowning was a noble profession that would <laughs> allow you to have your own home. Are you sure that it's not a car, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> I think you meant car full of clowns. <laughs> okay, that got me. <laughs> Another resident claimed she saw a clown with a blinking red nose. That's fucked up. Yeah. Standing next to a dumpster at nope. 2.30 a.m. That would... I mean, I would honestly probably shit myself. I would scream. I mean, first of all, you're not supposed to see clowns at nighttime. No. That's why it's so scary. That's why it's so scary. Or anywhere outside of a circus environment. What are you doing by that dumpster? (laughs) What's in the dumpster? Disposing of my next, my last victim. (laughs) What's in the dumpster? (laughs) Hee (laughs) hee hee hee. Others reported clowns standing under street lights or at laundromats. They had to wash all their giant pants in size. It's not going to fit in an average size washer. No, you, you got to have those big ones where like, you take your, your comforter yes, to wash it in. It's, it's all the handkerchiefs that are in their shirts. Yes, there's so many handkerchiefs. <laughs> and then when they get them out of the dryer, you're like, God damn it. Did I get behind this clown? Are you ever going to be finished? I don't know when it'll end. The clowns seemed to be merely observing the passerbys in the neighborhood, staring at them, and sometimes waving. Is it worse if the clown waves or doesn't wave? Waves. If, I was going to say. I think waves. Waves is uh, sort of inviting you to interact. Yes. At least if he doesn't wave, it's a rude clown, and he's probably not going to approach you. If he waves, he's acknowledging he's seen you. That is the worst part. And then you 
have to acknowledge that you know that he's seen you. Give him the old nope. Yeah. Just shake your head and keep walking. Officials took reports from terrified residents seriously, but were unable to uncover any substantial evidence or suspicious persons. They even searched for the alleged house in the woods, and while they did find one that matched the description given by the local children, there was no clown paraphernalia present. They clean up after themselves. <laughs> They're tidy. <laughs> Residents of the Fleetwood Manor apartments began to take matter into their own hands, firing their guns at the wooded areas. <laughs> it's a reasonable response. <laughs> and all you hear is squeak, beep. <laughs> <laughs> They're hitting things left and right. In there. They get them on the nose. Yeah. Mm, boy, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> You just see this stream of water come out. <laughs> they're, they're shooting back at us. It's the, They busted out the flowers. They're shooting back at us. It's the gun with the bang, and it just comes out on the little, uh, yeah, the little sign. While police still had not confirmed any of the sightings, they sent additional deputies to patrol the complex and the surrounding woods, fearing the worst from gun-toting vigilantes. I just feel so bad for this police department. <laughs> we, uh, we're going to need you boys to work overtime. <laughs> What we've got is we got a clown epidemic, and uh, I'm going to miss my son's t-ball match. I, listen here, Johnson. Do you want to be an officer or not? we got clowns in the goddamn woods. <laughs> oh, I'll tell Billy I can't be there. Maybe somebody will film it. Oh. <laughs> so we sad. got clowns in the woods. we got clowns in the woods. These woods are full of goddamn clowns. <laughs> i got a city to protect. Property managers even distributed flyers warning children of the dangers of walking alone in the woods at night. And fearful parents enforced curfews and kept their doors and windows locked at all times. At least, you know, you get the kids in at a reasonable time. Well, also, yes, it's dangerous to walk alone in the woods at night. Clown or no clown, don't walk alone in the woods at night. It's never a good choice. Nothing good is going to come of that. My question is a flyer. First of all, you know it was Comic Sans font. Because what else do you use? <laughs> Absolutely. And it just also says, every multicolored paper throughout. It's pink paper. It says clowns, exclamation mark. Everyone's excited. And then it says in the woods, dangerous. We'll, we'll kill you yeah. in the woods. Avoid woods at You're all like, Well, you buried the lead there. I was excited for a minute. <laughs> That's how they, they hook you in. Was was that the only uh, incidence of clowns? Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> not by a long shot. During the next five weeks, more clown sightings were reported in more than a dozen other cities. Well, clowns are migrants. <laughs> they usually move around with the circus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just what they didn't tell you is the circus was also in town in all these other cities. <laughs> so it's an Airbnb out by the pond. <laughs> they're staying there for work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these poor clowns, honestly, they're the victims in this story, <laughs> so, if you ask me. Trying to earn an honest living. In Marion County, Florida, the driver of a car took a video that quickly went viral of a clown lurking in the brush by a dirt road. I just... <laughs> Every time I envision one of these, I get so tickled. What if he was taking a crap, man? He's probably shitting. <laughs> Avery shit on the side of the he's road. He's like, God damn it. I'm just trying to take a dump. Ah, oh, again. I'm all over the tube. Could you not film me? <laughs> but have you ever stopped on the side of the road? Like a long to poop? stretch? Not to poop, but to pee. For sure. No. Not even a long stretch. <laughs> I've just stopped on my way like home before. You're like, I got, I got to right now. I was, I think I was driving back from Chicago and the passenger in the car was, <laughs> was asleep and I, it was like emergency status. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I always keep a, a wad of Starbucks napkins or McDonald's mm -hmm, napkins. Mm -hmm. So I pull over and I go and I open a door to like hide off what I'm yeah. doing. So I do what, what needs to be done and, you know, clean everything up. It's all, you know. Ready to roll, mm. and a policeman pulls up. Oh and my like, god! And pulls behind, and it goes. And then the passenger that I'm with wakes up, and I have to say, "Where?" He says, "Are you? Is everything okay? Is your car broken down?" I said, oh, "I thought it was, but it's okay." <laughs> but meanwhile, the evidence is right, is there. right there. Is it at night? No, it was full daytime. So he can see what what you've I done. I think he just sees a pile of napkins. <laughs> And so said, then he writes you a ticket for no, littering. No, it was very nice. He said, oh, well, I just, let me make sure you get back on the road okay. People kind of go pretty fast along here. And then I <laughs> pulled one over on the cop. <laughs> yeah, I took off nice. and I left the evidence in Southern Illinois. Nice. Sorry to our Southern Illinois listeners. I peed in the a car wash and didn't once. In the car wash? Um, Aren't there a lot of mechanical things coming yeah, at you? Yeah, I slipped and fell on a bunch of suds. <laughs> I was doing a bit. I thought you were in the car. You were in the car wash? No, I was not in a car. I walked into the car wash to 
happy. I this was college. I, this was college, and it was Ditton, and I had been <laughs> drinking a lot that night. You went into a car. I went so into dangerous. the car. It was. I slipped and fell <laughs> <laughs> in all the suds. And yes, there are a lot of machinery things around. Oh my god! Why I didn't just go in one of the many restaurants or gas stations neighboring this car wash? I do not remember. But you know what? At the time, though, it seems it seemed very logical and rational in my at the time. All right, so we have one clown in the bushes. That's not really too much to worry about. Well, in Palm Beach, resident Kelly Reynolds was taking her dog for a walk when she suddenly saw two clowns appear, God. causing her to sprint back to the safety of her house as quickly as she could. There were also reports of sightings in Pensacola and Gainesville. Well, the thing about these is there none, none of them have been overtly violent, with no. the exception of the p- potentially luring a kid into the what woods. What if you were just walking... Buffy and Goose down the street and all of Goose a sudden would... you look up and there are just two clowns staring at First you. First of all, I would scream and second of all, I would let the leash go and let Lucy attack because <laughs> she is the most vicious. I would also scream, pick up my dogs and as fast as away. I could and just haul oh. ass. Also, But here's my question. Shouldn't clowns have every the same right as you and me to just walk around? No. <laughs> They should have zero rights. No, I mean, I guess if you want to be be appropriate, if you want to be the person to unless it's Halloween, I don't think we should be dressing up in costumes and just walking about the neighborhood. I think there's an implication behind your face, behind hiding your face. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? If you're wearing a mask, if you're wearing the clown paint. Why? Why, though? Exactly. Well, back in North Carolina, reports were now popping up in Forsyth where a woman claimed that a machete-wielding clown tried to lure her into the forest. In September, there were also reports in Henrico and Augusta of children and their parents seeing clowns leering at them from cars in wooded areas. I think it's still hanging out in the woods. I think anybody... The woods is scary. Clown. Anything in the woods is scary. That's where Goat Man is. Yes. That's where Slender Man lives. Yeah. All the bad things live in the woods. And I think if you, you know, if they're, especially if you're wielding a machete and, yeah, in that's, a costume... That- Either way, <laughs> that's a red flag. There's not really. Did you see that video of the guy in Dallas who someone rear-ended him on the highway and he jumped out of his car with a machete? Oh my! Walked gosh. around the car and just busted out their back window and then got in his car and just backed out and drove the wrong way on the highway away. Wow! It was insane. But my question was: the machete was clearly in the front seat. Like yeah. it was. Oh, he was ready. to He go. didn't have to get out and go to the trunk, yeah. open the trunk, get it out. It was just right there. He had a machete in his car. He was in his front seat. <laughs> that's. I mean, good thing it was just the window. Yeah, seriously. That's crazy. Well, at least one of the sightings in Augusta was explained away when a mother came forward saying that her 12-year-old autistic son had wanted to wear his Halloween costume early that year. So that's a reasonable explanation. Yes, and can you imagine, you're like, oh my gosh, this is why this is all over the news. Yeah, and your kid was just... (laughs) Because my kid just wanted to wear his costume early that year. Walk around, yeah. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, reports began to surface of people seeing a clown about town. A clown about town? A clown about town. He was a fancy clown. (laughs) He was creepily holding a bouquet of black balloons. Oh, yeah. That makes it worse. They're not colorful. They're sinister. I think colorful is scarier. Do you think so? I think for some reason. Maybe it's just because I associate all those colors with clowns. Oh, I thought you were going to say you associate black balloons with the Goo Goo Dolls. (laughs) Oh, song, maybe, man. yeah. And the Goo Goo Dolls is a good band. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Either way, it's scary. We uh, were listening to, it wasn't a playlist the other day. We had it on the TV playing with Ella and stuff. It was just songs that Tommy has played on Spotify, mm-hmm. and it was just for hours. And so, and there was so much Matchbox 20. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> Matchbox 20 is good. Matchbox 20. Like, I remember that album Real very world well it's a good that's yeah a good album. it's very good man that's funny but yeah i think either any kind of if, if the clown is not clearly on his way to or from a party or a gathering just having the balloons is like what, what are you trying yeah to do what those? are you doing here what's your end game what if you pop some and there's blood inside oh well cj guzan a local actor said the clown was simply viral marketing for a film he was shooting called gags while some residents found the humor in this and enjoyed the gag sightings Others were not amused and took to social media, posting pictures armed with guns, promising to defend themselves should they have a run in with gags. Imagine you dress up like a clown and viral market your movie in your shot. That is the saddest. This is people like the the viral videos of 
creepy clowns hiding out in parking garages and waiting for strangers to come by and then scaring them. That's how you get shot to death in a parking garage. I will say there's a very funny, I think it was a Vine video of a guy in hiding in, I think it's a trash can, and uh, it's outside of a house at Halloween time, and there's a bowl of candy, and it, you're basically supposed to go up and take right. one, and it's a dad and his daughter, and they walk up, and the guy pops out of the trash can, and the dad just nails one on his face. <laughs> I mean, punches him right in the face. It's just reflex. And it's reflex. He's there with his yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, the person gets pretty much knocked out, and the guy's like, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. But it's something like that where it's like yelling fire in a movie theater. Yeah. You're disturbing what normal society expects. Yeah. You know, I'm expecting to walk to work, not see a GD clown stand yeah. on the corner. Yeah. And so I think it, when there are consequences to those actions, maybe they were a little bit brought about on by, by your behavior. Mm, maybe so. You get punched in the face for scaring a dad and his kid. That's probably, that's a natural consequence I of your so. result. Absolutely. Of your, uh, action. Reports of clown sightings continue to pour in from Pennsylvania, Virginia, Ohio, New York State, and Dallas, Texas. Sweet home, Dallas. In October of 2016, Skyline High School, where my father-in-law went to high school, oh, there you go. went on lockdown after a suspicious student was spotted wearing a clown mask. I remember this. And there was a picture on Instagram. There's a couple pictures yeah. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. At Spruce High. Shout out to where my mom went. Oh, nice. We got both the parents' schools here. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even intentional. A student reported seeing a clown tying balloons on cars in the parking lot which led to an automated phone message being sent to parents warning them of the potential threat. Again, so that, I had to record that. That, <laughs> that is a text message that you do not expect to receive well, this when vote. you're dropping off carpool. Hello, this is Principal Sanderson. I just needed to send this message out. There's a clown in the parking lot. <laughs> I mean, he's tying balloons. We're anyway, not just... really sure what the motive is, but yeah. just be aware. <laughs> Who's just to be say? aware. Well, the entire country was in a clown panic. Things were getting so out of hand that police began arresting people simply dressed as clowns on various charges. That's that's mean. You're trying to live your life. A professional clowner. They need rights. They need a union. I think they've got one. You know, sometimes people ask you to donate things on GoFundMe. Uh Uh-huh. I once had a person ask me to donate money for them to go to clown school. (laughs) Did you? It was right after my dad died. And that's it's like when someone messages you on uh, Facebook and is like, hey, how's it going? Do you want to buy this nail polish? And you're like, you didn't read my Facebook. Yeah. And you saw my dad die. You know that my dad died? He's like, hey, Heather, your life looks like it's great. I just wanted to know if you wanted to donate to this GoFundMe <laughs> mm, so I could well, go to clown school. Why don't you go back and read my feed? Well, I'm like, you don't need to go to school. You're a fucking clown already for that message you <laughs> yeah, just sent me. Idiot. I wonder if you ever went to clown school. I got to look him up. Oh, you should. See whatever happened to him. That is my nightmare. <laughs> so a they, clown school, they, a school full of clowns. Let's not besmirch clowns too much. Dallas Comedy House taught a clown class. That's true. An intro to clown class. And our friend Caspar Skells took the class and I talked to him about it at brunch on Sunday. And uh-huh. his, his exact quote was, I took a clown class. I thought it would be fun, but it was so much emotion. Many people were crying. <laughs> And he said, that's really interesting, though. He said that the clown teacher said, a lot of people don't make it through their first class. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently clowning is not for the faint of heart. I guess not. No, you know what? You can't. Well, it is. A- I do imagine it, it brings out a lot of emotion because you have to. It's, it's, all, it's all pantomime and facial expression. And acting. So yeah. you're really like digging deep into things. Many people were crying. <laughs> Many people cried. <laughs> I love Caspars. I do, too. So people were getting arrested on various charges. In Middlesburg, Kentucky, a 20-year-old man was arrested for hiding in a ditch while dressed in a clown costume. Again, why? why? What are you doing What are you doing down there? Nothing Mm -mm. nothing you should be. You shouldn't be in a ditch unless you fell in. (laughs) That's the only reason why I've ever been in a ditch. Maybe he was like doing slapstick stuff like, oh, I'm going to jump over this ditch. And he he fell in. Maybe he slipped on a banana peel. (laughs) (laughs) In Virginia, two teens were arrested after dressing as clowns and chasing children down the street. That's warranted. This is some. This is. I would call the police if a clown chased out. I would have loved for a clown to chase me down the street. My mom dumped a full diet coke on an abominable snowman in a church haunted house because he would not stop. Like he was coming at me and trying to scare me, and I was getting scared. And my mom just took the lid off of her (laughs) diet coke. Abominable snowman's wearing a white suit. By the way, need I remind you? And just. Did the whole good psh, for like, you, Nancy? And the guy's like, "Hey, lady!" And she said, "I told you to get away from her." 
And so I can only imagine. First of all, I love that your mom was walking through a haunted house with a Diet, Diet Coke. Coke. That is a very Christy thing to do. <laughs> yes. My question is, why were we at the Catholic Church haunted house? I think our neighbors like went to that church or something, but we ended up at that haunted house. And why was there an abominable stomach? Someone just had the suit? Yeah. What's that? I don't How know. How do you tie that in? I don't know. That but seems like a reach. Got- doused with the well i bet he thought twice before he (laughs) just decided to harass a young girl (laughs) well now he knows in one particularly tragic case in pennsylvania 16 year old high school sophomore christian torres was stabbed to death allegedly over the fact that he was seen around the neighborhood wearing a clown mask similar to those and seen in the horror movie purge which those masks are very creepy well and also i think you know it just goes to show you like i said just it's this very visceral result from people where they're so terrified of something and not that anybody ever deserves to get stabbed to death but that is a risk that you take when and scaring he, when people. he was stabbed to death they all the articles made sure to mention that he didn't he wasn't even wearing the mask it was pushed up on the top of his head Ooh. but apparently there had been some dispute amongst the neighborhood that he had been seen with it on like menacing and- I guess so. It's, it's, it's a little, yeah. Especially a teenager. And oh, yeah. Just trying to, I mean, not that you should ever do pranks on scare little children. You never think that it's going to end that way. That badly. I mean, it's yeah. the worst case scenario. And the, the assailant was in his, like, mid-20s. Oof. Also young. Evil clowns seem to be everywhere you turned, threatening both children and adults, seemingly leaving no one safe. However, was this eerie phenomenon really that unique? Sightings of sinister clowns have been reported since the early 1980s. In Boston, 1981, there were reports of evil clowns harassing children while they were walking to school, attempting to coax them into their white vans with the promise of candy. Suspiciously, adults never saw these clowns, leading cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman to dub them the Phantom Clowns. So what if it was real and only kids could see them? Like Snuffleupagus? (laughs) Yes, like Snuffleupagus, <laughs> but evil. Yeah, like an evil sn- Snuffy could never be. No, evil. he was the sweetest. Oh but my gosh. it's like the kids all saw him, and they. I mean, that is very, that is very Stephen King. It mm-hmm. Pennywise, who was a shapeshifter, he took on the the fears that kids had, and pers- and he wasn't always a like clown. A he, could be a, he could be other things, but only the children saw him. Yeah, yeah. So it's similar. Maybe that's part of the idea. Maybe. The phantom clown phenomenon soon spread to Kansas City, Denver, Omaha, and Pennsylvania, with alleged sightings becoming more frequent in the months and weeks leading up to Halloween. But was that all this was? Halloween pranksters getting their kicks by preying on the public sphere of clowns? Or was something much more diabolical at play? My question is nowadays, so you see a clown in Dallas or whatever, and there's a picture on the Internet. Somebody easily can see that in Canada or Europe or, you know, easily. Mm -hmm. But in in 1981, maybe it's in the newspaper. Right. And who in Kansas City is reading the Boston newspaper? No one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always my question. How does things spread virally now? But how did it spread? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, because they've got a clown underground railroad <laughs> the cl- a clown newsletter <laughs> the clowns are everywhere <laughs> they are oftentimes creepy clown sightings are nothing more than publicity stunts in 2013 a sinister clown began stalking the streets of the small uk town of northampton causing worry and confusion from neighbors he did not attack or harass anyone but merely wandered the streets silently occasionally posing for photos and exclaiming beep beep well, he's at least willing to take a picture. And he's probably, if he's nicer than any of the characters in Las Vegas, he doesn't harass you for money after taking a photo. Exactly, yeah. He's... I once saw Bumblebee from the Transformers cuss a man out <laughs> for taking a picture of Bumblebee and oh, the kid. Oh, and not paying And him? not paying. Yeah, you got to pay those people. Dude, Bumblebee Same with was the, about to go uh, beast mode. The L.A. ones in front of the, the Chinese oh, theater. Oh, Chinese Yeah, theater. yeah, yeah. In October of 2013, it was revealed that the clown's true identity was Alex Powell, a 22-year-old filmmaker. While Powell claimed it was all in good fun, many did not see it that way and sent Alex and his friends hate mail and death threats. They had set up a Facebook page for it, too, so then people found him through that Facebook page that he had set up and then sent all this hate mail. That's Uh, how much people hate clowns, (laughs) even though he came out and said... This is just a prank. They're you like, son of a bitch. Oh, you deserve to die. <laughs> I think of all the things you send death threats for, this was uh, mm, maybe this, not one. Yeah, maybe a little low on the totem pole. 
About six months after the Northampton clown attention faded, a mysterious and seemingly evil clown began lurking in the New York borough of Staten Island. The New York Post investigated and quickly determined a local production company called Fuzz on the Lens was responsible for the mayhem. And their response was, you got us, guys. Retweet Staten Island Clown at hashtag love. Yeah. Well, any, any publicity is good publicity. That's what they were trying to do. Yeah. Other times, horrible people simply don clown costumes and makeup to hide their true identity while committing heinous acts. On October 24th, a young man dressed as a clown in the French city of Haral destroyed a car. The next day, a pedestrian was attacked with an iron bar by a man in clown makeup in the town of Montpierre. The attacker was arrested and given a 12-month sentence. It would suck to be beat by an iron bar. It would really suck to be beat by an iron bar by a clown. It sort of gives it an extra layer of uh, insult to injury, right? <laughs> yes. You get your and because then you have to tell people what happened. Like a clown, a clown beat the a shit out of me. This to me, this was going on. Or this was in 2014, around the same time as there were some similar sightings, you know, in California and all that. And so it's they were saying they were thinking it was parallel because they were both online and the pictures were out there. And mm-hmm. so they think it was copycats, kind of Mass in the hysteria. same area. Yeah. October 28th in Belgium, an 18-year-old man was severely beaten by two men in clown costumes. Two days later, in Luxembourg, a young man was the victim of a violent burglary by four clowns. The clowns wielded knives, and the victim ended up in the hospital, requiring stitches. The proliferation of these attacks led one French town to ban clown costumes altogether. And the cops thought, they said, you know, it must be people have seen this online and now are just taking on the persona. It wasn't catters. Yeah, it wasn't that the clowns were evil. It was that it was evil people who saw a good way to cover their face up. Yes, in that instance, it's just evil people trying, instead of using a ski mask, they decide to use a clown mask. Mm Mm-hmm. For many, clowns seem like the obvious costume choice to terrify unsuspecting neighborhoods or commit crimes. But why is that? Why do clowns evoke such fright and panic in so many people? Clowns are not overtly scary in the way a snake or a serial killer who openly wields a knife may be. Yet it is not uncommon to find them upsetting and unsettling. In his book, Bad Clowns, Benjamin Radford suggests that the fear of clowns stems from a latent or potential harm. On the surface, clowns are seemingly silly, with their pratfalls and wacky props. But the concern is that the harmless fool before us is not so harmless after all. The costume, makeup, and act are all a fallacy. And while they may be cute and funny for the performance, we fear what the man behind the face paint truly is when the act ends. This, Like I said, this book was very, is very good, well-researched, and there's enough information about bad clowns to fill a whole book. I you. love that this man felt the world needed to see this i believe he also wrote a book about chupacabras so i feel like we would be friends <laughs> i think it's a great i book. think we should have him on the show yeah it was a great book lon cheney the great silent film actor and star of laugh clown laugh once said the clown is funny in the circus ring but what would be the normal reaction to opening a door at midnight and finding the same clown there in the moonlight well i would uh Probably have a heart attack on the spot. Well, I just got a little nervous. Thanks, Lon Chaney. <laughs> Laugh Clown Laugh is a horrifying silent film from like the 30s where I, th- I believe a clown leaps to his death and commits suicide. It's There was a lot of disturbing clown imagery. Silent films in general freak me out. Beginning in the late 1800s and on, there was a lot of disturbing clown imagery. Yeah. Clowns use oversized and larger than life props. Mainly because a circus seats so many, and a tiny pair of glasses or a small flower may be lost on an audience member in a faraway seat. However, these props, born of necessity, only contribute to a clown's scariness. Because why are his feet so big? Clowns fall into the uncanny valley territory. That is, they are sort of recognizable, but not entirely. They straddle the category of human or inhuman. Their body structure is clearly human, but their makeup wigs and oversized shoes make them seem inhuman so while they are supposed to be funny they are often seen as scary yeah you can't figure out the hell they are Mm -mm. from an evolutionary perspective humans have a tendency to subconsciously categorize things as harmful or harmless when something cannot be easily categorized as either fear sets in survival is based on knowing who you are letting in your door if someone is masked or made up with face paint it is hard to determine whether they are safe or harmful. Unless it's a clown, in which case, don't let them in the house. Never let a clown in your house. <laughs> Never. 
But the uncanny valley only partially explains creepy clowns. Otherwise, clowns and heavily made up actors would have always elicited these feelings. And there have been many beloved clowns throughout history, such as Bozo and Clarabelle. Love Bozo. Frank McAndrews, a social psychologist that published a study on the nature of creepiness, says that what really makes clowns creepy is that they are ambiguous characters in so many ways. McAndrews says, If a person is willing to flout the conventions of society by dressing and acting as they do, what other rules might they be willing to break? I think that's one of the big things with me is the type of person that wants to be a clown. And ask for you to pay for it on GoFundMe. <laughs> see, and we probably have some listeners that are clowns or want to be clowns. I'm not clown shaming. Be a clown. Live your life. It is interesting, though, thinking about why someone wants to take on that profession. Well, true. And and there are instances, I think, where it's uh, at the end of the day, it's a, an acting job, you know, mm-hmm. and we're, we're actors, you know, mm-hmm. we're comedians. Why? Why do you want to get on stage and make make believe and you right. know, make up a fake story? Why do you want to get behind a microphone and talk about? you know, finger banging and, and serial killers. Right. Right. So it's just that th- you're, you're called. Sure. To do you're it. a performer. I you're get performer, that. You know, you're called to do it or whatever. But I think the issue here is he is not only he's right. I think Frank McAndrews is right. Cause you see this person sort of flouting social conventions and you think, well, he's willing to put himself out there and be mm-hmm. that wild. Like what else? What do else? Do? If this, then what? And then also, yeah. And then also I think because sometimes if there's the, the book talked about if there's two clowns and they're kind of clowning around together, that's one thing because you're watching a show. Mm-hmm. But if there's one clown and he's looking at you, Mm-mm. then you're getting you know pulled into the action whether you want it or Mm-mm. not. Mm-mm. In his study, McAndrews surveyed more than 1,300 people to figure out what behaviors and physical characteristics people find creepy. The common factor was unpredictability. Well, and that's what it is because you're like, what the hell are they willing to do? Mm-hmm. When clowns originated centuries ago in ancient Greece, they were archetypical characters meant to represent every man. The figure of a clown was a mainstay in theaters, but became more prevalent in Italy during the Renaissance period, where the popular Commedia dell'arte was popular in the 16th century. Yeah, and that was that's a thing that they teach you in, you know, oh, yeah. first, 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 day year theater. Of, first day of theater, you learn about this. Make masks and how the ma- the different archetypical characters were easy for people from far away. It was like silent films. Yeah, for sure. But some of these clowns were freaky as hell. Mm-hmm. Harlequin was one such character in Commedia dell'arte and was known as a, quote, crude and chaotic figure with a mask and a colorful diamond pattern costume. Although dressed as a clown, he had a much more sinister background. His first appearance in history was as a specter or a demon, leading a ghostly nocturnal funeral procession known as a wild hunt. So he's kind of freaky looking. Yeah, this demon. is a very recognized clown in history. Archetype, yeah. Yes, this and Harlequin sort of like the with the patterned black and yes, red. Yeah. And, looks yeah. kind of like a court gesture. Perhaps one reason Harlequin was a ghoulish figure was that he almost always performed in silence and pantomime. Silence is one aspect that makes a clown mysterious and unnerving, as there is little information for an audience member to predict whether the clown's motivations are peaceful or malicious. Likewise, their painted faces hide facial expressions, making their motives hard to determine. Because it's always a constant smile painted on their Mm -hmm. face. You don't know if they're really like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Like the Joker. (laughs) Exactly. Jack Nicholson's the best Joker. I mean, he was a clown, yeah. I'm going to put it out there. Jack Nicholson's the best Joker. Mm. Mm. I mean, he's great. <laughs> Heath Ledger, though. He's he's great. Oh, have you seen the trailer for the new one? With stupid Joaquin Phoenix and he's dancing around. It looks creepy as fuck and I'm here for it. Really? Yes. I, I, I mean, I'll, probably, I'll see it. It's It has a very psycho-esque vibe to yes. it. Yes. Towards the end of the 19th century... A new type of clown began to emerge, one not intent on spreading laughter, but one who sought bloody and awful revenge. In 1892, the first killer clown in literature appeared, an E. Pagliacci. Dressed for his job as a clown, the lead character, Canio, discovers that his wife, Netta, is having an affair. While still in full clown costume and makeup, he confronts and murders his wife and her lover. This opera was featured in the opera episode of Seinfeld, where crazy Joe Davola, obsessed with Elaine, dresses like Canio 
and stalks the main characters at the opening night of the opera. This is such a good episode. It's so good. And, she, and especially Elaine is very freaked out because he, Crazy Joe DeVolo's got pictures of her all over the house. Yes. Is that Banaka? Is yeah, that Sherry Banaka? That's right, that's right. And uh, Kramer is very scared of clowns yes. and doesn't want to go to the opera because of it. And then Joe DeVolo comes, showed up, uh, he comes dressed up as, as uh, Canio. It's a very good episode. While clowns have been depicted as evil and sinister beings for centuries, the public sphere reached all new heights with the arrest of serial killer John Wayne Gacy in 1979. It's going to have to be a whole episode on its own. Oh, for sure. A couple, probably. I will say, <laughs> someone goes, what's your topic for this week? And I said, clowns. And he said, oh, so you're going to talk about John Wayne Gacy? And I said, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I should be fired from this job. <laughs> it's not a job. I should be fired from the show. <laughs> Gacy's alter eco. Pogo the Clown was a regular at children's birthday parties in Cook County, Illinois. Both children and their parents adored and trusted Gacy and silly, lovable Pogo. But when Gacy was arrested for the rape, torture, and murder of at least 33 teenage boys, the nation was horrified and stunned, and the connection between clowns and murder was staunchly fixed in the public's mind. You can't blame the media, though. You have a guy, a serial killer that's caught with all these bodies under his house. Mm -hmm. That picture of him in the clown mm -hmm. makeup is God. just too good not you to. You can't not. It's too sensational. It is. It's You can't make that stuff up. Yeah. The days of clowns being seen as silly, joyful characters, bringing laughter to children at birthday parties and the circus, were over. Hollywood soon recognized the fear that clowns evoked in people and ran with it. In 1982, the film Poltergeist was released in which a sinister clown doll lives beneath a little girl's bed. So scary. Yes. This movie still scares me. Craig T. Nelson's in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. It's so good. In 1987, Stephen King's novel It was released, which features Pennywise, a murderous, shape-shifting evil clown that emerges every 27 years to prey on children. Can I just say I have an Audible, and so I got the It audiobook because it's 48 hours long, and I thought, you know, I'm going to get my money's worth. I started listening to it. Mm -hmm. The first six and a half hours are about rainwater, <laughs> and I thought, if somebody didn't kill a kid soon, I'm going to turn this off. And then it happened? No, I left. I turned it <laughs> you off. You turned it off? It is to Tommy is the biggest Stephen King fan I'm aware. I've known. It is his favorite okay uh novel he's read it and listened to it multiple times we have so much it paraphernalia so much pennywise paraphernalia in our home i recently I haven't seen any of it really we have a um a large print of pennywise that's autographed by tim curry okay that's pretty dope i liked i mean i like tim curry as a person clue rocky horror oh Picture yeah Show. great i think we would he be was friends. also great as pennywise yeah it's i think so, we'd be friends too it's so scary that I, it makes me so scared. Yeah, it's it's scary. I need immersion therapy. I need to meet Tim Curry and have him be like, it's okay. But then he's so funny and cheeky. He'd probably whisper and be like, yeah. I really am a girl. Yeah. And I'd we be like, look down ah! here, Heather. <laughs> no, I just got so scared. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of Pennywise stuff. We have a lot of Stephen King stuff, period. Yeah. There's a lot of Stephen King stuff in our house, but all very cool art. So I love Stephen King, too. Not as much as my husband. Well, it's okay. But I love him very much. And Stephen King's very talented. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was also made into a two-part television movie in 1990. That's what got me. And into a major motion picture in 2017. Have not seen it. Ugh, very good. Leading some to speculate the clown sightings of 2016 were tied to the film's debut. And people may have been inspired. You know, sure. the movie's coming out, there's hype. And the sequel's coming out in a few months. The literal only reason why I'm going to see that is because I love Bill Hader so much. Caught up on Why Barry. are you going to see it? I don't think you should see it. You don't think I should? <laughs> no. Don't laugh. I don't think you'll ever be the same again. <laughs> I mean, I'm scared by the trailer, and and I don't. I get was terrified scared. by the trailer until I, think, I saw Bill Hader, and I got excited. I think if you do see it, you should wait for it to come out where you can watch it at home. No, it's even worse. I don't want to for the, for the comfort of the other moviegoers. <laughs> Because you will. I'm a screamer. I screamed in La Llorona and it's not scary. <laughs> I think you might get a manager from Alamo walking up to your table. I probably get thrown out. Saying, I'm going to probably scare you. Ma'am. Ma'am. We're going to have to ask We know you this is a horror movie. You're disturbing. <laughs> You're going to have to chill out. The episodes. <laughs> but I did catch up on Barry. Oh. Which we talked about. Have you about. seen episode five? Yes. Is it. Did you laugh like a man? We were like screaming. Like we were watching I was, it like. I laughed for the entire duration. Like cry laughed. Yeah. When he, it was just unreal. When he, Stephen Wright, or not Stephen Wright, Stephen Root. Stephen Root gets back into the car. He's like, I don't think that's, 
that's not a girl. And Bill Hader's just like, I told you, man. She's not of this I earth. told you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's so funny. Oh, it's so good. Got to show it. He deserves all the Emmys. Uh-huh. In 1988, Killer Clowns from Outer Space came out, in which a pack of murderous aliens resembling circus clowns use cotton candy webs and guns that shoot deadly popcorn in order to invade a small town to capture, kill, and harvest the human inhabitants and use them as sustenance. The campy film became an instant cult classic, and in October 2018, the Sci-Fi Channel announced that it was in talks to purchase the rights in order to produce a sequel. This was oh. a big staple in my house growing really? up. Really? Between my dad and my brother. I do remember seeing the cover at Hollywood Video oh, yes. and being scared of the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it is very campy and cheesy. Mm-hmm. The fear of clowns is so real that it even has a name, colrophobia. Colro meaning stilt walking. Colrophobia is not an actual clinical phobia recognized by the DSM-5, but rather a pseudo-clinical pop culture term. However, cases of clinical colrophobes have been reported in journal articles. Treatment includes psychotherapy and habituation, a gradual increase in exposure to clowns meant to create comfort with the idea. That's exposure. also like immersion therapy. Yeah. yeah, that's what you need. That's what we both need. Oh God, we're gonna get sent to the. We're gonna get sent to clown school. Our <laughs> listeners are gonna start a GoFundMe to send us to clown school. So we have to get over our fear of this. Well, it means we got to think of our clown name. Oh, clown, what, would, what would yours be? I love on Modern Family. He had Fizbo, and then his daughter's <laughs> name is Lily, and he decides to call her Lizbo. And <laughs> Mitch is like, "Really? That's what you want to call it, really?" Oh, oh, I have to think about it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a BuzzFeed quiz that'll tell me pretty quickly what, what it is. is. Yes, we'll have to. Uh, if you, if you, if anyone has a good clown name, please send us a message or comment tweet on our us. Instagram. Tweet us to let us know what your clown name is. Cultural differences also factor into one's perception of clowns. In 2008, a British study was conducted that found that of the 250 children polled, almost all of them disliked clowns. However, an Italian study found that therapy clowns made children feel less anxious before surgery and that playing with therapeutic clowns helped kids with respiratory illnesses recover a bit faster. I also read a study about Australian kids that were given, you know, that given access to clown therapy and something like only 3% didn't like the clowns. Everybody else loved them. It sounds them. cultural, especially Italian has, that doesn't surprise yeah, me. They, they have a, a big, a big history of that. Australia does surprise me a bit, <laughs> but... You know, maybe they just hadn't seen the killer clowns yet. from outer space. Mm-hmm. But I do remember as a kid going to Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. Circus oh, yeah, same as a kid. And I didn't feel afraid of clowns. And I'm from Mesquite, home of the championship rodeo. Mm. And I've always had a great respect for rodeo clowns. Yeah. Oh, that is a dangerous job. I have one. Well, I've seen rodeo clowns like save a cowboy's life, you mm-hmm. know, where they get bucked off and the bulls maybe get yeah, gore they them, distract them and they distract them and run and jump in the barrel. For so. sure. Yes. Fun fact. When I was little. I wanted to be a tightrope or a, uh, what is it called when you swing on the things? Trapeze artist? I wanted to be a trapeze artist when I grew up. That's so, I wanted to be a barrel racer in a, the, the rodeo. We could have started our own circus. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we should go to clown school. It's all coming full <laughs> circle now. Still, there are those who would sooner have the plug pulled than have a clown visit them in the hospital. It's true. It's such a great fear. Including some famous colrophobes, such as Johnny Depp, Billy Bob Thornton, P. Diddy, Cosmo Kramer in Seinfeld, Xander in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Wacko from Animaniacs, and Bart Simpson. They're all famous, especially the fictional characters had famous run-ins, you know, in the show. Wacko's running around. It's very scary of the clown and can't sleep. Clown will eat me mm-hmm, from the Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Very, very famous. Despite Hollywood and the media's depiction, fear of clowns is really not that prevalent. Glenn Kohlberger, president of Clowns of America International, complains that Hollywood loves to sensationalize the norm and take any situation, <laughs> no matter how good or pure, and turn it into a nightmare. <laughs> I like when I don't do the voices for Christy before the show, so it's a surprise <laughs> when I just do them. I'm Glenn uh, Cole. Because I imagine I'm he's constantly, he's clown. not even doing an accent for we his clown character. <laughs> That's just how he talks. He grew up talking like that, and his parents were like, Well, you know, you have to be a clown. I want to be a psychotherapist. No, you will be a clown. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
Well, according to Mr. Kohlberger, the Clowns of America International Organization does not support in any way, shape, or form any medium that sensationalizes or adds to the cholerophobia or clown fear. So in college, my some friends at another college, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to me, signed me up for the Clowns of America International Newsletter. <laughs> You got a lot of pranksters in your I, life. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you, it was very well known that I did not like clowns. And I one day am just going to my mailbox in my Rrr. dorm and open it. And I think, what is this? Just 10 pages stapled together, folded over in my mailbox. Greetings from Glenn Kohlberger. <laughs> I printed it all by Eatjet Printer. It is, it is just printed out. Uh, black and white pages all stapled together, not even in an envelope, just just, just folded over <laughs> with an address mailer P.O. box on the front. Yeah. Flip to the back for cloud facts. It was very creepy. I was very creeped out. And then throughout that week, I would go to my room and then there'd be like a little clown figurine on my door. They're so or, mean. I know. Yeah. Well, you none of us are friends anymore. So maybe that's why. <laughs> Despite Mr. Kohlberger's proclamations, comedian Bobcat Goldwaite succinctly summed up why we are all scared of clowns. Most people get nervous when they see a clown because clowns give off this vibe that they're going to make you touch their penis. That's kind of how Bobcat Goldwaite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's that's a voice that is distinctly his, I which is only, one reason he's probably successful. You know, he's in. I always loved him in uh, my favorite Christmas movie is Scrooge. Oh yeah, he's great in Scrooge, and he plays Elliot Loudermilk, yep. which is such a great. Character name, yeah, he's great in that. It's Scrooge Mr. Cross. So good. I'm here to see it, Mr. Cross. Scrooge is top three for sure. It's by far my. It's mm. my favorite Christmas movie. I watch it every year and live tweet. It, yeah, <laughs> and live tweet about it. I'm just myself. It watching is very Scrooge. good. Well, to this day, the 2016 clown sightings haven't been explained. Some believe it was merely Halloween pranksters, while others point to publicity stunts and excitement for the 2017 release of Stephen King's It. Social psychologist Frank McAndrews believes the rash of sightings can be attributed to social media leading to mass hysteria. Social media fans the flames by giving us a false sense of how widespread something is and how threatened we should be feeling. Better to err on the side of caution by protecting your children from killer clowns than to err in the other direction. We now have the ability to sound alarms and spread rumors with a megaphone, and we never pass up the opportunity to do so. It's just like Momo. Yeah, it just it gets out of hand. Or Slenderman or any of those things where it's just, luckily this didn't divulge into actual murder like Slenderman true. did. Well, except for that one kid. And Yeah, that's true, yeah. If, it was, if it was all connected. But yeah, people freak out on social media and it just develops into this thing, which again, going back to what you said about the stuff in 1980, makes it interesting mm-hmm. that it still somehow managed to spread without the social media uh, addition to it yeah maybe it just spread slower but you know people have family in different cities and maybe they call and yeah. tell or i mean you know it can get around interesting or like we i don't, said it's a real thing no man is an island but phantom clowns i think it's more likely that the phantom clowns are real mm-hmm. so what if there really is something to all these sightings and we should be taking them a little more seriously maybe deep in the woods of greenfield north carolina sits a rundown shack near a murky pond filled with oversized shoes spongy red noses and rainbow wigs that can be found by following the trail of blood-stained empty candy wrappers (laughs) i really don't appreciate the implication (laughs) that clowns are evil i can't stop talking like glenn colbert oh man (laughs) i've never heard him talk i hope he talks like that that's how he sounds to me so what do we think well you know there's a cultural phenomenon that folklorists call ostension mm-hmm. where one report sort of leads to another leads to another then leads to people actually doing it mm-hmm. so if you hear that there's clowns running amok then some people who are going to run amok anyway then don clown masks therefore there are more reports of clowns right. running amok so it's like actually a cultural thing that happens right and folklorists study it so you hear of people poisoning candy well maybe they didn't but someone that was going to you know has that urge to poison people then poisons candy so then you have reports of poisoning candy. it's kind of like a copycat killer type yes, of thing a little bit yes. yeah yeah definitely i think i think in almost all these cases it's just either kids saying things are happening that aren't really happening That's for true. attention 
to just have have some fun and pranks or it's close to Halloween and people are just getting their kicks off by doing scary stuff like this. Or the Northampton guy was trying to promote a short yeah, film he made. Or there's just publicity stunts and stuff like that. When it gets dangerous is when people carry machetes in their car and a clown ruins you. <laughs> it gets out of Takes Somebody matters into their own hands. Bust out Telling the window you, of your Honda Accord. We li- in this day and age, I just people that do stuff like this, I do not get because you don't know who carries a gun. You don't know who you're walking up next to into a parking garage when you're just thinking, oh, I'm just going to scare this person, this stranger that are on just a hair trigger that yeah. they're just ready to hit somebody yes. or ready to. If a, if a person dressed as a clown or anything came up to me in a parking garage, I would. Beat the shit out of them. Yeah. I mean, in, in Mason, whatever. Yes. So it's one of those things where you ask yourself, well, we should all have the right to go around and do whatever we want. And you do. You have the absolute sure. right to do anything you want, but it doesn't mean you are free from the consequences right. from your behavior. So if you want to do anything you want, be prepared to deal with the repercussions. Pop out of the trash can, a guy's going to hit you in the face. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's funny and fun to pop out of the trash can for the 10 times that you do it that someone doesn't hit you in the face, but you can't be upset right. when you get punched in the mug. So, yeah. I mean, it's also upsetting to that man that punched him in the face. Well, you feel bad, but yeah. I and mean, what if what if he had punched him so hard he'd killed him? Like that's true. Then you get into this situation where, like, sure, you have the right to do anything you want. It's a tragedy that was could have been stopped. Yeah, and then that man has to live with that. Suddenly, your abominable snowman costume is ruined <laughs> with Diet Coke. I'll tell you who did not feel bad. My mom. Oh hell no! She, I told you. I told you to back up. That's funny. She don't fuck around. That's why you don't like haunted houses. Probably. I was traumatized mm-hmm. as a child. Well, let us know what you guys think. Let us know your clown names. And Definitely. If you've had any scary run-in with clowns or anything. And I will say, I would like to point out, I have a lot of clowns. I love I love Bozo. I love Fizbo on Modern Family. Uh, I'm sure there's other ones. <laughs> I don't really have any attachment to clowns. I love except, rodeo clowns. Except negative one. I mean, they don't freak me out as much now as they did when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But I completely understand why they're freaky. I agree with the Uncanny Valley, which is a fascinating concept in itself. Of like, there's just something a little off. Yeah. And you do have that biological response of, okay, well, if a guy's running at you with an axe, he's evil. If a guy's just standing there waving at you and he's not evil. But if someone's face is masked and you can't tell, are they smiling? Are they frowning? But if a clown is waving at you, well, it's time to risk That's where where (laughs) your brain short circuits. Don't hang out in the woods. Well, many of you have asked if we have a Patreon where you can donate to the show. We do. Our show will always remain free, but if you wish to donate to help offset the cost of making and hosting the show, you can visit Sinisterhood.com and click on Patreon in the top right corner. You can get some sweet perks like Patreon-exclusive content, a Sinisterhood sticker, membership to our exclusive Patreon Facebook group, a special shout-out on the show, and a monthly bonus mini and if you are interested in, like Christy and I, donning some sweet Sinisterhood merch, mm-hmm. head to Sinisterhood.com and click shop in the top right corner. You can get cool things like a mug, a tote bag, clothes for your baby, mm-hmm. clothes for toddlers in your life, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, and more. Just head to Sinisterhood.com and click shop in the top right corner. Yes. Well, the best thing you can do to help us grow is like, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. And tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out. It means so much to us and really helps small podcasts like us get more exposure. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. Christy, where are you at? I am on Twitter at Christy or GTFO and I am on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace. Heather? You can find my embarrassing things that happened to me tweeted at MCK versus the world or pictures of me floating in a pool in a donut at Heather vs. the world on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures of my baby. Uh, and you have the best. I like your Instagram stories. Thank you. She Today she was playing with the Roomba as yes, if she was, was her friend. And it was funny because my coworker actually yelled at another coworker and said, I got a Roomba. And then the, our boss was like, isn't it the best thing? And they were talking they about how the they love the Roomba. He goes, my kids can't eat shit without dropping it all over the floor. <laughs> and now I just turned the robot on. My she, wife was very anti-Roomba. And I'm like, look at this. Look at this floor. It's never looked like this. She loves the Roomba. She loves to wave at it. She likes to turn it on and then run around. It's nicknamed Flapjack. So we'll say hi, Flapjack. Did she say hi, Flapjack? She says hi to it. She says oh, hi and waves to it I and love, likes that's to a run good around. Name. The first one we had was Pancake. Okay. Then we upgraded to a better model. It's and even better. it's Flapjack. I yeah. love it so much. Uh, we'll stick around after the sign-off to hear your Patreon shout-outs. Yes. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. 
We want to say thank you so much to everybody that supports us on Patreon. Here are your Patreon shoutouts. Aaron Sexton. Kate Keown. The 16th best rapper in the world, Touch AC, also known as James Wallace. Hell yeah, Wallace. And Whitney Yuzva. We want to say thank you so much for supporting the show, and we look forward to interacting with you guys on our Facebook group. Thank you. Keep it creepy. Sinning.